Hey, yo. Hey, Danny K. Just a minute, chum. Are you addressing me? Yeah, K. I. Oh, you're Ross and Wells. <laughs> I mistook you for Danny K. How dare you? <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Mr. Wells, I should have known. I just saw your latest picture. Tomorrow's forever. Thank you, but I'm on my way to appear on the Danny Kay program. Yeah? You're going to think tonight's forever. <laughs> Who are you? I'm an average radio listener. Well, you look older than 12. <laughs> but tell me, my Vox Popoff, I haven't heard any of Mr. Kay's programs this year. What does he do? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I know is he has one joke. My sister married an Irishman, or really? No, O'Reilly. You'll find out. Now, just a minute, my killer cycle killjoy. To my way of thinking, Mr. K is a very fine artist. To my way of thinking, your way of thinking is no way of thinking. <laughs> but, uh, Wells, maybe you can teach him a thing or. Or two. No, uh, just one. We don't want to burden him. <laughs> well, that's neither here nor. I'm here tonight because Mr. K is leaving for Hollywood tomorrow, and I'm going to give him a few pointers about making the proper social contacts in Hollywood. Oh, how to make friends with influential people? Correct. <laughs> Hollywood is a community of primary impressions where an individual is categorized by his initial impingement upon the consciousness of any social orbits. Ah, <laughs> you're just saying that. <laughs> but what does it mean? Who knows? But didn't I read it beautifully? <laughs> Well, excuse me now, Mr. K's program is about to go on the air. Oh, yeah, glad you reminded me. I got to run home and turn off my radio. Come on, chum. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dick Joy introducing the Danny K Show with Butterfly McQueen, Dave Terry and his orchestra, and our special guests tonight, Orson Welles and her nibs, Miss Georgia Gibbs. And here's the star of our show... Danny Kay! Wait a minute, wait a minute, Danny. Would you mind repeating what you just did? Oh, hello, Orson. Larson, I'm certainly glad. Never to... mind that. What was that you just did into the microphone? <laughs> what, you mean my scat song? Scat the song? Yes. That's my signature. Well, your handwriting is awful. <laughs> you do that again, but slowly this time? Be very happy to. To get scat giddle. I see. I see. Go on. Giddly app, giddly tummy. Oh, oh is that so? <laughs> Riddly biddly roop. Well, that sounds reasonable. Greek passage. Oh, she did, huh? <laughs> Skiddly doo Oh, her husband. And suddenly, huh? <laughs> biddly water reap. Well, I don't blame him. Of course not, Orson. What else could he do? How long were they married, Danny? They weren't married at all. They weren't? Oh, then you're reading that wrong. Oh. It should go like this. Git gap skittle the app, riddle the tummy. Huh? Riddle the biddle the roof. Sorry, pass on. Skittle the what up? Skittle the wood up. Jump. Reap. Danny, what else goes on here on this merry half hour of fun, frolic, and frivolity? Well, you know, Orson, the usual radio program. Oh, that's that, hmm? <laughs> What do you mean, bad? We have music, songs, jokes, and once we got a laugh. Your suspenders broke? Yes. Yeah. No, no! We call it a joke. Oh, that's the joke I've been hearing about. How does it go again? Well, it's a very simple joke, Orson. Gets a very big laugh. Here, I'll do it with you. Orson, my sister married an Irishman. Is that so? No, O'Reilly. <laughs> That's uh, a joke. Well, uh, something went wrong here. Danny, Danny, you're about to go to Hollywood. If you tell that joke out there, you wind up no place. Oh, really? No oblivion. <laughs> That's funny. You get a laugh with it, and I can't. Danny, if you insist on telling that O'Reilly joke, it should be presented in a super colossal Hollywood production. Mm -hmm. It should be given the famous Orson Welles touch. The Orson Welles touch? <laughs> What's that? I'll show you. Now, who can we get to play the part of a girl? Mm, well, how about a girl? 
Act. That's typecasting. <laughs> but get her. Who is she? Oh, her nibs, Miss Georgia Gibbs. Oh. Hi, Georgia, honey. You're about to be honored with a role in a production directed with that famous Orson Welles touch. You uh, know Orson, of course. How do you do, Miss Gibbs? Hello, Mr. Welles. Well, come on, Orson. If you're going to give any joke this Hollywood production, let's get going. Not so fast, Daniel. You don't attempt a stupendous undertaking such as this super-colossal, breathtaking spectacle without time, research, preparation. I'll need at least two minutes and 15 seconds. (laughs) By an odd turn of fate, that's just the length of George's number. (laughs) Sing it, Miss Gates. I took a choo 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 choo, fast as I could take a choo choo. I come a long, 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 long way to take you in my arms. And now it's your first move to prove that you've been true. Go to baby, do. You've been away, way, 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 way beyond the blue horizon. I'm hoping, no, 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 no. No one else is on your mind. So buckle up, my sweet, meet your Waterloo. Go to baby, do stop me from guessing. There's no time to be stop all this messing. Put your bank, baby, at ease. I want to love, love, love you Just the way I want to love you I'm gonna try, try, try to try To make you understand When all is said and done The one for me is you Come to baby do. Stop me from guessing Ain't no time to tease all this mess is Just your bag of baby at ease I want to love, love, love you Just the way I want to love you I'm going to try, try, try To try to make you understand When all is said and done The one for me is you Come to baby do Come to baby Baby, please do. Hey, Perry, would you play a little uh, symphony, please?
I mean the old, old, old cannonball. Cannonball is running great, trying to make connections with the and nickel plate and then the nickel plate's running fine, trying to make connections with the old Sioux line and then the old Sioux line keeps to the rail, trying to make connections with the, the Royal Mail and then the Royal Mail, trying to see oh the Atchison and Topeka and a Santa Fe and then the Santa Fe nothing flew, trying to keep up with the BNO, the BNO runs like a fountain, trying to make connections with the Iron Mountain and the Iron Mountain is really terrific, trying to keep up with the Southern Pacific, the old B, running like well, trying to make connections with the M and St. L. The M and St. L, I must confess, is trying to keep up with the Hartford Express. The Hartford Express is going insane, oh, trying to make connections with the Boston and Maine, and then the Boston and Maine, and meet them all, trying to make connections with the Cannonball, and then the Cannonball, running fine, trying to make connections with that old Now, Danny, let's go on to the production. Places, everybody. Mr. Terry, fanfare. Orson Welles presents The Wife of O'Reilly. Adapted from the joke on the Danny K program, based upon a joke used by Fred Allen, suggested by a joke on the Jimmy Durante show from an original joke told on the Jack Carson broadcast, stolen from an old Buster Keaton movie. Hello, Mr. K. Well, it's Butterfly McQueen. Come on in, Miss McQueen. What are all these interruptions? Oh, Orson, this is Butterfly McQueen, president of the Danny Kay Fan Club. Well, we're just in time, Miss McQueen. Take your place. You might as well be in this production, too. What's going on, Mr. Kay? Well, Mr. Wells is going to stage a big Hollywood production here. You know who Mr. Wells is. The young actor, writer, producer who set the American theater on fire. That's Orson. I thought... You've seen his pictures, haven't you? He writes, directs, produces, and stars himself in them. Oh, that's nice. Then he can't possibly blame anybody but himself. Thanks. Oh, no? How about that developing fluid? <laughs> well, we're wasting time on with the production. Oh, yes. You <clears throat> see, Mr. Wells is preparing me for Hollywood. Uh, I'm going out to California next week. Oh, California's a wonderful place to live. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're an orange. <laughs> But, Mr. K, what will happen to me if you go to Hollywood? Well, I don't know, Butterfly. Would you like to come along and be my social secretary? What will I have to do? Well, the first thing every morning, you run through my mail. Before I put on my shoes? <laughs> After. How's your shorthand? Well, I never measured them, but I think they're both the same length. No, 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 no. I mean, how are you on dictation? I'm we fought a war to get rid of him. This routine is going to make the O'Reilly joke seem like a classical gem. Now let's get on with our production. Places, stand by. Music. <laughs> the Columbia Sweatshop presents. The Wife of O'Reilly, or The Frowning Irishman. Written, produced, and directed by Orson Welles, and starring Danny Kaye in a very small part. <laughs> I barely made it. My name is O'Reilly. Timothy O'Reilly. Timothy J. O'Reilly. My forefathers before me were named O'Reilly. One day, from far off England, there came into our peaceful village a strange, mysterious couple. Our simple people were mystified. I am mystified. I am mystified. I am Miss McQueen. <laughs> when do I come in? They were a handsome pair, brother and sister. One was a blonde, an exotic creature with hair of gossamer gold. Gee, thanks. My sister is cute, too, huh? Our simple, gentle people had never beheld such delicate loveliness as that of Caroline Miller. Caroline, blessed name. She lived with her brother in the thatch-covered cottage... In the thatch-covered cottage at the end of the lane. 
They were seen but seldom by the townsfolk. One day in the marketplace, I saw her coming towards me. I lifted my hat. Good morning, Miss Miller. My name is O'Reilly. Oh, really? (laughs) She was gone. I hoped I might chance upon her brother, Joseph. Maybe through him I might meet this wondrous vision of delight. And then one day in the marketplace, striding toward me, came Joseph. I lifted my hat. Good morning, sir. My name is O'Reilly. Oh, really? He was gone. It's a fine part I've got here. Suddenly he turned and came back. Oh, I'm back in again. He approached and spoke to me. What did you say your name is? O'Reilly. Oh, really? You're just the man I'm looking for. I want you to meet my sister. I'll arrange it. Goodbye. He was gone in a trice. Convertible trice. (laughs) But days went by and neither Joseph nor Carolyn Miller emerged from their thatch-covered cottage. And the simple, gentle people of our town wondered, who are these two? What do they want? Why did they come here? Who are these two? What do they want? Why did they come here? I just said that. (laughs) Ah, pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me, too. You didn't say anything. I know. I'm just polite. (laughs) Meanwhile, in the thatch-covered cottage at the end of the lane, Caroline Miller and her brother Joseph were seated at dinner. They were having words. Uh, Have uh, some more alphabet soup, Joseph. No, and stop putting words in my mouth. (laughs) Joseph, must we go on like this forever? You've hardly spoken to me for days. Are you worried about the book you're writing? Of course, my book. If it weren't for you, I'd have finished writing it. Me? What have I done? It's what you haven't done. Why won't you marry this man O'Reilly? He's the most successful fisherman in the village. Only this morning his boat came in loaded with mackerel, cod, and smelt to high heaven. (laughs) But, uh, But I don't love him, Joseph. Carolyn Miller, do you realize what the men in the marketplace are saying? They're saying that a beautiful girl like you should have a husband. Oh, Joseph, they are not. Yes, they are. I heard them this morning when you passed. They all said, a hubby, 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 hubby. <laughs> now, Joseph, Joseph was right, but not only the men were talking, the women as well. A pretty girl like that. Why doesn't she get married? Yes, why doesn't she get married? Yes, why doesn't she get married? Nobody worries about me getting married. <laughs> Carolyn, please, for my sake, for the sake of my book, marry him. Just this once. I promise you the greatest wedding a girl ever had. Well, Joseph, if it means so much to you, I will. You will? Oh, good. I'll get McNamara's band. Oh, what a wedding there'll be. What a time we'll have. Oh, his name is McNamara. He's the leader of the band. Although they're few in numbers, they're the finest in the land. Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns they blaze away. The coffee pumps the old bassoon while I have the pipes to play. And the Hennessy, Tennessee tootles the flute and the music is something grand. A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band. For there's Rannigan, Flanagan, Harrigan, Hannigan, Shaughnessy, and O'Toole. McCafferty, Rafferty, Darity, Flaherty, Slaherty, and O'Toole. Oh, Brady, O'Brien, O'Reilly, O'Ryan, Maloney, Mahoney, McCann. O'Donnell, O'Connell, O'Farrell, O'Carroll, O'Shaughnessy, O'Horn, and O'Farrell, 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 O'Farrell,
Or call me Julius. Copycat, that's not the way Julius Caesar opened. Well, how does it begin? Well, the action of Julius Caesar opens on a street in Rome where a group of citizens and tradespeople who gather to welcome Caesar are talking. Now, stop right there. In the opening of a musical picture, nobody talks. No? No, no, everybody sings. Well, what do they sing? Anything, as long as it's an opening chorus. Now, we'll make one up right here. A little opening fanfare, if you please, David. When it's cherry blossom time in Orange, New Jersey, it's middle of summer in Rome. So we say, hooray for Julius Caesar. Who? Who? Why, none other than the noblest Roman of them all, Julius. You mean that master tradesman, president of the ice cream manufacturer's guild? No, no, that's Julius Freezer. <laughs> Well, is it then that master needleworker and head tailor? No, oh, no, that's Julius Caesar! <laughs> well, then, uh... here comes Caesar again. At this point in the original, Caesar enters in a chariot drawn by four white horses. Well, that's definitely a part for a great Western star. A real man of the people. That's for you, Orson. You make your entrance, dragging your saddle behind you, and you sing... I'm a cowboy from the Avian Prairie, Pluribus Unum, an old Roman in the Gloman, you see, Pluribus Unum, I never want a Pouillas, I don't even... Step right up, shake my hand, call me Julius. Yippee-yay, yippee-yay, oh, yippee-yay, After his entrance, Caesar betrays his anxiety by saying to Mark Anthony, Let me have men about me that are fat, sleek-headed men, and such a sleep o' nights. Jan Cassius has a lean and hungry look. What a part for Sinatra. <laughs> if you don't see me each day, you're lucky. Life without me can be so ducky. Karloff could take the place of Cassius with a hungry face. Well, what was he so worried about, Orson? Didn't he have a friend in the whole play? Oh, yes, that was Mark Anthony. He's his close friend and confidant with whom he discussed all his programs. What did you... Problems. (laughs) (laughs) What did you say his name was? Mark Anthony. Anthony, huh? Anthony Lake. Well, I got it. Scene open, Caesar knocks on the door. Come in. Is this the house of Mark Anthony? Yes. Well, Mr. Anthony, I have a problem. Cassius knows what Cassius, he said, Croesus tried to please us. So Titinus went to Sinner's house, and Sinner went to pieces. Now cautious, very cautious, she said, Caesar tried to squeeze her. So took handle, took a sandal, and hit Caesar in the beezer. So what I want to know is, if shoes is the shoemaker, won't give us all a trick handle, has no one to cobble them. His sandals will wobble them, and if they trouble them, Mr. Antony, what is my problem? No names. No problem. <laughs> Well, there's only one thing wrong with this picture, Danny, among other things. If you don't actually have Caesar killed in the Senate, you'll lose the most famous line in the play. And what is that? When the hapless Caesar is foully stabbed, he turns his reproachful eye on his faithful friend Brutus and says, Et tu, Brutus. That's the most famous line. <laughs> Well, then it's got to be the top song in the picture. As this is a comedy, Orson, it's got to be sung by the comedy team. I'm Cassius. I'm Brutus. We're on the radio. I'm Brutus. I'm Cassius. Hello, hello, hello. I dine at Cato's Busy Bee. You know how bad the food is. I'll never go back there again. I know. I et too, Brutus. <laughs> We 
have just spent $3 million on a picture with no love interest. Didn't Caesar have a girl? Yes, he had a wife who figured very largely in the play Calpurnia. Calpurnia? Mm. That's a great finish. I can see it all now. After leaving the Senate, Caesar travels down the dusty road, dragging his horse behind him, opens the ranch gate, sees Calpurnia, and sings... California, here I come. Right back where I started from. That is where we started. Where the good really parted. And my friend, this is in the end. This is the only picture that ends in the middle for the benefit of the people who came in in the middle. This, this, this. Be sure it's true when you say I love you. It's a sin to tell a lie. Millions of hearts have been broken just because this one. Yes, honey, I'll never forget the day I first met you. You were just what the doctor ordered. I had the flu and you were a registered nurse. <laughs> yeah, you were a sight for sore eyes. Built like a box of boric acid. <laughs> I remember our first date, honey. You wore an hourglass gown over your beer glass figure. <laughs> yeah, baby, you had me eaten out of the palm of your hand. Then you bought a set of dishes. I loved you, darling. I didn't care how you wore your hair. As long as you wore it. I loved your ears, your lips, your eyes. And all those darling little freckles you got on your tongue from eating Swiss cheese in the sun. We used to have so much fun, honey, until that night we were taking care of your sister's baby. And when I picked him up, honey, you told me to watch out for his head. It wasn't his head I had to watch. <laughs> honey, you lied to me. So you see, it's a sin to Good night. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.